let me just go to First Peter mm-hmm. um, because what's what Peter is doing is Peter see and, and the rest of the New Testament authors are seeing that yes, this new Exodus has kicked off in Jesus, and yet it hasn't done. It's not done yet because we're not at, back at the blessed land, which is for them new creation, the new heavens and new earth. Um, and so that means that what it means to be a Christian right now at this time, from the whole span of between Jesus' first and second coming, is that we're Christ, we're people who yes have been Passovered, right? <laughs> we've, we've we've experienced the beginnings of Exodus, and yet we're exiles. Mm. And so the whole story, all the stories of Israel's exile, the story of Daniel, the story of Jeremiah, and his letter to the ex- all that stuff speaks to the the moment that we're living in as Christians. We're exiles. And Peter, mm-hmm. Peter's letter is framed around that. So what's fascinating is that First Peter, most scholars agree that First Peter is written primarily to a Gentile audience, Gentile Christian audience. Okay? okay. But he kicks off the letter by saying, Peter, an apostle of Messiah Jesus, to those who are the chosen exiles of the dispersion. So and, and this is not a throwaway phrase. Oh, that's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's frames, so funny how I've I've read that yeah. and just not just you. It's so oh, it's just part of the greetings in the letter. You just it, kind but of it's read so right not through it. He's know? meaning to tell his people because Peter is oh, all wow. about suffering that will be followed by glory, mm-hmm. and it's all about framing. This is what it means to live and suffer as a Christian, um, in light of you're in exile, waiting for the final redemption. So then he'll say, um, according to God's mercy, has caused us to be born again through. Uh, the resurrection of Jesus to an inheritance that is kept in heaven waiting for us to be revealed at the last time, that final salvation, speaking of the, of the inheritance, the inheritance mm-hmm. of what? The promised land, right? The new heavens yeah. and new earth. And then he says, so um, how, are you supposed to, how are you supposed to act? Do not, as obedient children, don't be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, your former gentile, you know, sinful way of life. But as the one who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. And this is taking Exodus mm. language, the language of God's relationship to his people and saying, you're God's holy people. Mm-hmm. And so if you'd call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, because you know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as gold and silver, but with the, the blood, the precious blood of Christ. So, no, remember that God has exodus you from mm. sin. And in light of that, live the rest of your life as exiles. So as people who, yes, are here in the world, but who don't belong here and are waiting for, um, for your, true, your true home. Mm. And so put away all malice and deceit and hypocrisy as sojourners and exiles in chapter two, ex- abstain from the passions of your flesh, which wage war against your soul. Why? Because that's, you're, in, you're exiles, right? Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak evil against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Whoa. So, um, so live as people who are exiles in the surrounding world, not letting the world uh, make you think that you're home and just sort of succumbing mm. to it, but also caring about what everyone else how, how you witness to who you really are, caring about that the Gentiles, which is really interesting. He's calling the non-Christians Gentiles, even though he's writing to ethnic Gentiles, right? <laughs> Why? Oh. Why? Because in the previous verse, he says, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people oh. for his own possession, which is straight up Exodus 19. Oh, yeah. Okay. That starts making sense. Yeah. That's but a very, what very is, good point. He's taking Exodus language and, and language of God's relationship to Israel, and he's uh-huh. saying, this is your story now, right? That hmm. whole story. Yeah, yeah, sure. You're, you're, you're ethnic Gentiles, whatever. But no, you are that. That story is yours, and mm. and so you live. Um, he says, once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Look, you're God's people now. The Exodus story is yours, and so the exile story is yours too. So walk around as God's kingdom of priests, as Israel was supposed to do, um, and wait. Your time in exile, not caving to the pressures of sin but waiting for the Gentiles to eventually glorify God on the day of visitation. What's fascinating about that word visitation is it's basically the same words, the form of the, roughly the same word um, that is used in Exodus for when, um, when uh, Moses goes to the people and, and delivers to them, hey, God is, God is 
here to to redeem you and they recognize mm-hmm. they they rejoice mm-hmm. because God has visited them hmm. um or at in Exodus also when Moses takes um takes the bones of Joseph in the exo- in the uh, Exodus he, he carts Joseph's bones mm-hmm. that the text says Joseph made them swear he Joseph said God will visit you and when he does take my bones so that language of in in first peter of wait for the day of visitation is saying oh live in exile as people who suffer mm-hmm. people who are a good bear god's name well to the gentiles mm-hmm. who don't make egypt your home right and wait for god's visitation double click the new exodus that you're that you're you know waiting for and then this this is why he speaks so much about slaves be subject to your masters Wives be be submissive to your husbands, particularly. I think um, somewhat he's not not entirely, but somewhat he's talking uh, about non Christian husbands in in this case. Hmm. Um, mm-hmm. He talks about um, he talks about suffering since the Messiah suffered in the flesh. Arm yourself with the same way of thinking. Um, he says. Don't be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you, but rejoice in that you are sharing in, in the Messiah's suffering. Um, and then he says that uh, he and all of us, by implication, are sharers in the sufferings of the Messiah as well as a partaker of, in the glory that is to be, to be revealed in the future. So it's all framed around the idea that this motif of exile and then the expectation of full, full, the full realization of Exodus that has started drives what it means to live as a Christian in our world, in our society, hmm. right? As we wait for the conclusion of the exile theme is Genesis, is Revelation 21 and 22, when God's people hmm. are all brought to the new heavens and new earth and there's rest and peace and it's a restoration of Eden. God's presence is fully there, right? It's the ultimate, you know, undoing of exile. Wow. So, I mean, that's... That's fascinating. 